I came out and I have to ask, what exactly is going on? Well, Katie, I think I made the perfect chocolate chip cookie recipe, but I'm having issues with portioning and ensuring each cookie will bake and taste the same. I mean, the dough looks pretty good itself. I'd love to get the recipe. But as for portioning, I have some tools here that might be able to help you get consistency with each cookie. Oh, that would be great. I know you were an amateur baker as well as being a software dev. That's right. Uh, when my code is done, I turn it over to the customer. They then deploy it in their cloud project according to a long list of instructions that I've written. But the problem is that these deployments often turn out like my cookies, uneven and not very good. That does sound frustrating. Yeah, it makes the customer unhappy and makes me look bad. I know my code is correct, but if it's deployed incorrectly, it won't work. Have you considered using an infrastructure as code tool? Instead of your documentation, you could write it all as code. Then you get repeatable deployments in a machine-readable language. Oh, sounds great. What's the tool? There are several. But one that's widely used right now is called Terraform. It supports many major cloud platforms, including Google Cloud. Let me give you an example of some of the benefits of infrastructure as code. This gcloud command will create a cloud storage bucket for you. But if you run it again, you'll get an error that the bucket already exists. You could add manual checks around this command to ask if the bucket already exists and create it if it doesn't. But when you start adding these checks around all your scripts, it gets complex and unmaintainable. So with Terraform, I won't have to write so much shell code? Exactly. In Terraform, you describe your desired state. A bucket exists in your project. Applying the Terraform manifest will check if the desired state has been met. If the bucket already exists, Terraform will take no action. If the bucket doesn't exist, Terraform will take the steps required to create it. But what if I have things that are different between deployments, uh, like Google Cloud Project ID? You write Terraform manifests in HCL, HashiCorp configuration language, which allows for such complexities like variables and calculated fields. Terraform will also work out the dependency graph itself when working with multiple resources. Some resources have to be created before others, and some resources create data that will be used by other resources. For example, if you have a Cloud Run service that relies on a cloud storage bucket, the bucket has to exist first, and Terraform will work that out. If you have, say, a deployment of five Cloud Run functions that are independent of each other, Terraform will run those creations in parallel, which will be much faster than creating each of those one by one. Can I configure other Google Cloud products with Terraform? Of course, it isn't just limited to serverless products. With the Google Terraform provider, you can deploy virtual machines, networking, and other complex infrastructure that would be downright annoying and frustrating to have to manually deploy over and over again. Oh, nice. Um, so could Terraform also help me with setting up test environments? I mean, sure. Just consider what needs to be different in test. You may want to add some variables to, say, create a smaller Cloud SQL instance rather than a production spec one. But with Terraform, you can easily create duplicate setups, much like a cookie cutter in your baking adventures. <laughs> that sounds great. Uh, can I also tell Terraform to build my containers? Well, Terraform deploys existing assets like containers or compile code. It presumes these resources already exist. There are a couple of ways that you can get around this. You could have your existing artifact creation process and then manually run Terraform when required. That works well if, like you said, you deliver your code to a customer. Or you can add Terraform to your existing automation, for example, as a step in your cloud build configuration. This works well if you're doing in-house development with continuous deployments. So I should convert the long list of installation instructions in my readme file to a Terraform manifest? It's probably a good idea. Not only will your deployments get more reliable, you can store your live infrastructure configuration settings along with your code and source control. I've left some links in the description for you. All right, I will read up on that. Uh, so could you show me an example of a Terraform manifest for a serverless web application? 
How about we catch up next week and sit down and work with some Terraform code and try deploying a few things? Yeah, that would give me a better idea of how Terraform works. Let's do it. Great.